I always thought to be a journalist and I tried for that many times because it was not very easy to get yourself engaged with a, a good media house in Pakistan. In this profession, again, I opted uh, uh, to become an investigative journalist. I mean, the reporting that got him initially in trouble was really quite brave. <laughs> I mean, he was, he was essentially calling into question the integrity of of uh, evidence that was used against the you know Prime Minister Noah Sharif in the Supreme Court on a, in a corruption case, and uh, he, he did a series of highly critical columns. I guess it was in May, June, and July of 2017. That's what I'm sure what, was what got him in trouble. In a country like Pakistan, there is a history of attacking the journalists as well. Uh, there have been many cases where journalists were killed. I myself was attacked on October 27, 2017, and I was injured with severe head injuries, uh, uh, but I survived. Uh, that was an attempt on my life. In Pakistan, after he was threatened and uh, beaten nearly to death and fired and blacklisted, and then they continued the threats because he continued to work. He's been targeted before violently because of what he's published, um, but he remains very committed to his goal of trying to provide unbiased news on corruption in Pakistan. And that's led him through this temporary position that we helped arrange with Alfred Friendly Press Foundation for him to launch uh, a new what news platform online called Fact Focus, where he's continuing that work. Uh, they got him fired, and then he started to, tried to start an independent website, but it's, it was difficult for him. You know, he didn't have the resources. But coming here, he has the he's had the resources uh, to develop this website. And it's great that Evan Durrani has started this Fact Focus. I think future is uh, of data journalism because this is the only way how we can keep our governments and politicians under. Uh, under watch, they need to be watched. They owe us, they owe this to us. Right now, I think that Pakistan journalism is in one of its darkest times. Um, uh, with the threats, the kidnappings, the pickups of people and they disappear and then they show up at beaten and things of that nature. It's, it's, it's a scary time to be a journalist there. Risks are always there. You have to face risks. You have to speak truth to the power, which is not an easy thing. If a journalist is brave, he claims to be brave, he says that I will continue working and I will continue to speak truth to the power and I can face anything. At many times, uh, the journalists saying this uh, are speaking truth. They really are committed to their profession. And the journalists who are really working um, good in their field really don't don't consider these threats even the life threats <clears throat> this this become the part of their lives but the most hard part is that family part obviously your family uh, obviously your mother will never understand that uh, <clears throat> this is part of your profession so your kids will never understand your family members will never understand you know he he's the sort of person who doesn't give up easily <laughs> he's a he's a journalist he's an investigative journalist he doesn't know how to stop being an investigative journalist and so he, he continues I, and I admire that tremendously. I indulged myself into different activities, but believe me, I was unable to do that. And uh, finally, uh, I have decided that I can't do anything <laughs> right now uh, except journalism. He really wants to help the people of Pakistan, and he believes that holding uh, powerful people in the, in the government um, and the military uh, is important for democracy in Pakistan and the health of the country. He's the kind of person that, you know, society should want in their midst, not ban from their midst. He's the guy who shot, sheds honest light and truth on what's happening. And any country needs truth tellers. The maxim for, for what he's doing is that the fact is mightier than the sword. The military is very powerful in Pakistan. Um, and they're not being held accountable. They, uh, and um, 
his, he crossed the red line by doing this story about this retired general. The impact has been huge in Pakistan because it opened up the conversation about should the military uh, be held accountable or should they be this sacred cow of Pakistan that nobody says anything uh, critical about. I mean, we'll return to Pakistan at some point in the future and um, we're a little bit concerned about that. Or I am personally you know, concerned about his safety in this situation, but the military seems to seems to be exempt from the uh, scrutiny that's often given to politicians there. He should not go back. I don't, I, I don't feel he'd be very safe. I don't think he should go back right now. He got, he, he got away with his life last time. I don't think he should risk going back right now. I honestly don't. And the situation of my security is better than past. Why? Because I have done a big story, which has become very popular among the masses. So I feel support of the people. So if I will be attacked by anyone, the blame will go on the military. Facing treason charges will not be a problem for me. Facing any kind of case will not be a problem for me. They can put me in jail at maximum. The threat is of being attacked or killed, not any legal process. I will love to face the treason trial. My feeling is that with all the training and the journalism that's been done and is being done there, that it's opened up society's eyes to a lot of a lot of things, and um, I do think journalism and journalists have a fair amount of power there. Or they wouldn't be getting threatened. There are risks, and where you are starting also matters. If you are starting in USA, in Europe, or if you are starting in Pakistan, you must be knowing that even your life will be at risk for every story.